Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Model Kit Review. Today, we are going to be looking at a classic, a monogram classic to be exact, and this is Monogram's OS2U-3 Kingfisher, and the kit number is 0135. And this is a 148 scale kit, and this kit has been around for quite some time. This particular boxing was done in the 90s, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the progress that I've made on this kit so far and some of my notes there. We're also going to look at the plastic parts that are in the kit, some of the detail on that and kind of what's included in the kit. We'll look at the clear parts, the instructions that come in the kit. We'll also cover the decals. And on this particular kit, I'm actually building the land plane version. That's actually an option, and I wanted to do something a little bit different from the normal Kingfisher. And then finally, I will be giving my conclusions on this kit in the end, and we'll be asking the question, although this is an old kit, is it still worth building? This is the only OS2 U3 Kingfisher kit currently available in 148 scale, to my knowledge. And as such, if you want one of these on the shelf, your choice is either to build this kit or not. We're going to look at the surface detail on this kit, and as you can see, there's some raised panel lines, but then there's not a whole lot of detail. This is going to be kind of a canvas for painting and weathering. Your effort to make this look realistic, your time is going to be spent on the painting and finishing end of things. Looking at the instructions, we have step one, and that covers the engine and prop assembly. This is a single piece engine and cowl front. Detail painting is where you're gonna spend your time on this. I've already started the detail painting on this, as you can see, but I haven't completed it. It's not finished up. And then I'm gonna to have to figure out a way to mask this engine off to paint the front of the cowl. Step two just covers the cockpit on the plane. Very, very simple, super low parts count here. Step three is putting the wings together, and I would say just don't miss the landing light. That is part 10. I did not install the pitot two, which is part eight, just because I know if I did, I would break that off multiple times till I finish the kit. In step four, we're putting the fuselage halves together. The wing actually builds first and then slides through each fuselage half. It does yield a very good fuselage to wing fit. I've got a picture of that here. In this step, you're also installing the radio operator's compartment and some other detail parts. So take your time, look things over really well. In step five, it's the beaching gear for the plane and it's also the outriggers for the pontoons. Now I'm skipping this step. This is going to be different for me and we'll cover that in a second. On to step six and that just covers mounting the final details really on the plane, uh, the canopy and the radio operator in the back and, and some of the other parts, tail planes. You have to cut out the space for the rear tail wheel on this kit. You also have to cut off the pontoons, the floats there, and install the kit supplied landing gear for the land plane version of this. When I did cut out the tail wheel, I noticed that the kit plastic is extremely brittle. Probably some of the most brittle plastic I've seen on any, any kit. And so I just ran into a problem with it chipping. I've got some pictures here that show areas where chunks of it chipped out while I was working on it. Any cleanup you have to do on this kit on the seams is going to mean very careful work not to destroy the raised detail that's there. Finally, we have the marking options for the kit. You know, thankfully, this is only a two color plane. It's got the blue gray up top and a light gray underneath. All the marking options are this color scheme, so not super difficult. I've used monogram decals before. You know, as old as these are, I'm sure these are gonna turn out just great. I've had very good success with monogram decals. Also in step four, you are installing the decal for the instrument panel. I pirated the decal from an Edward Spitfire, cut it to shape and use that instead. It's still a one dimensional decal, but at least it's got some color. On the cockpit, you can see it's detail painting heavy. And so you have to paint the molded in seat belts and the headrests and any details that you want to show up through the canopy need to be painted on the single piece cockpit. Same thing for the radio operator's compartment. There is some detail there, but you're gonna have to just do some careful painting and some washes to try to bring out what detail is there. And it does make it harder in the painting sequence when everything is molded as one piece. 
In conclusion, is the Monogram Classics OS2 U3 Kingfisher still worth a build? Well, since it's the only game in town, I guess it automatically qualifies as a yes. The only real difficulty I have is with the raised detail being difficult to sand on the seams. Parts fit on this isn't terrible. I wouldn't call it great either. And again, as I mentioned, kind of a downside on this kit, the plastic is very, very brittle. I definitely have some cleanup to do to get this ready for paint. On the plus side, this kit has low parts count, which means it's not going to be super intensive time-wise as far as the construction process goes. The downside of that is it means there's a lot more detail painting that needs to be done on the interior of the kit, and this will just take some time. This kit has so few parts, it wouldn't be a terrible kit for a person doing their first 148 scale aircraft model, but if you wanna turn it out well, it definitely is gonna take some work. I'm really looking forward to how this kit turns out. I'm looking forward to finalizing the cleanup on it and getting it to the point where it is ready for paint and weathering. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge of making it look really nice. I've seen other modelers build this kit and really achieve outstanding results with it. So it can be turned out well, but it is, it's not a kit that right off the bat is going to make you look like a fantastic modeler. Well, I'd love to know what you guys think. If any of you have built this kit previously and want to share your experience, please feel free to do so in the comment section below. As always, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. And until next time, model on.